A. Uh, this is an, the first in a series where I talk you through my games at the Dutch Nationals. And this was my first game. Um, we were we were being we were paired up so that the international players got to play a Dutch player, and I got paired up with Bert on a uh, an, a winter uh, city table. Um, so we joked around about my desert army would have minus one because of the cold because they didn't have the gear, but it was a really enjoyable game. I really liked it. Thank you so much for the game, Bert, and. It was also a game where uh, I sort of had to put my money where my, where my mouth is because uh, Bert had brought a Hellcat. And I've been talking quite a lot of smack about Hellcats. So um, so that was interesting. Let's go and see how it went. Right. We were playing uh, key positions and I had brought my completely overpowered uh, Assault bridges, basically. Four Gurkhas, uh, three early war motorcycles, two darker stewards, four artillery observer, flamer jeep, two lieutenants, and an inexperienced medium mortar. Bert's list was a very typical American uh, skirmish list. He had two lieutenants, regulars, with uh, five skirmishers, uh, skirmish units, um, a recoilless rifle, uh, which was a light howitzer. I don't think he was very pleased with that one. A heavy howitzer. A quad gun tractor, uh, no, a quad gun truck, which had like four heavy machine guns or something like that. A very, very big gun. An HMD tractor, uh, a bazooka team, and a Hellcat. Now, the plan was to try and keep uh, three of the objectives close so that my Gurkhas could dominate them, could because I knew I could out assault anything that Bert had, right? Um, and all of his stuff was vulnerable to assaults as well, because I mean, even the Hellcat was open top, right? So I could assault and kill anything in his army. So I wanted the objectives to be close. Um, unfortunately, Bert got to, to place three objectives, I placed two, um, which means which meant that I couldn't really like decide everything, but I decided enough. So, in this picture here, you can see where the objectives went down. I think Bert started with the one in the center here. And I immediately put down one over here, so that it was 12 inches apart, that I could run from one to the other, that there was some line of side blockers I could run around. Bert then placed one in the back line here, which meant that I placed one over here, where, no, no, he didn't, he, he placed one here, which meant that I again counted by placing one there, so 12 inches apart. Then he placed one in the back line here. So he he started to overload one side. Um, this is a tactic that I've seen many play, players do, especially if, if they're up against someone who they know are better than themselves, overloading one side and then rolling off, getting that side will give you an a slight advantage, right? Because you're on the objectives. However, I won the roll off. I chose the side that you see over here. My army is already set up here on my movement tray. So um, that was bad for Bird. Um, my plan was still to hold three of the objectives with like 80% of my combat force and to maybe try and contest something else or, you know, like push to distract. Um, and then keep moving so that the artillery doesn't get to zero in. That's it. Now, um, I think I'll go back to this image here in a second because you can actually see all of Bert's deployment zone. Right. Bert stacks up uh, one side. I choose the, that side, of course, as I just said. Um, then we start deployment and I st start distracting him. I start by deploying my stuff way out on this flank. And I'll just go back to the other image here. There was a ruin way out on this flank. You can't really see it here because of the way the table is here. Um, but I start by setting up something over there. And Bert mirrors me because that's a thing you can sort of lure your opponent into mirroring you, which you can see here. He had three deployment zones. He had one here behind the ruins. He had one in the center. And then he had his artillery set up over here with the recoilless rifle sitting here and his 
Heavy Howard's just sitting all the way over in this corner. He wanted as much range as possible, and he could see two objectives from that position. So, um, I, however, end up with most of my infantry and fighting power, like my motorcycles and one of the stewards, in this area here. Behind this ruin, behind this hard cover, behind line of sight blocking over here. All of it ready to go up to these two objectives, leaving behind a medium mortar uh, on this objective here. So I knew exactly how to win this mission from deployment and onwards. Um, the only thing that I did was I put one of my motorbikes on the far, far flank here, which was going to push up and try to deliver pins to his heavy howitzer. As soon as that went down, I knew I wanted that motorcycle to move up that flank. Um, so yeah, that was that was the plan. That that was what uh, sorry uh, that was what I wanted to do. Um, push up here in the center, and you can already see this is this picture is taken when my push has uh, absolutely succeeded. This is the end of the game. I have a steward standing up here. I have got Gurkhas on this objective. I've got Gurkhas on that objective. I've got a lieutenant up as well. I've got my forward artillery observer. I've got a motorcycle here. Another motorcycle at this point is way up here in his own back line. Has killed the um, recoilless rifle and his lieutenant, which was over there as well. Um, so everything's just succeeding at this point. The critical moments, um, my forward artillery observer and my bikes pin his artillery, pin them out of the game. Basically, they, they don't do a thing after that. I, I just keep continuing to deliver pins to them. Um, the, the Hellcat, uh, he tries to put it up his Hellcat. They come in, it comes in from the serve all the way up here. Has a nice shot down the, the line. He tries to block me by using that. It doesn't really work because he's not on ambush, which means that I can at one point push my steward from this line of side block area to this line of side block area. So he, that didn't work. Um, I set up uh, to counter him, I set up my steward also to create a block. And I'll go back here to show it to you. There was a ruin here down over here as I told you. I set my steward here on ambush looking that direction. So I am cutting off his gun truck which is over here and his Hellcat which is over here from advancing towards the center. Perfect. So those two blocks were set up. Mine succeeded-ish, his did not. I actually succeeded in killing his uh, gun truck um, when he tries to push into my, my, my blocking area. Um, you can see the gun truck here, which is wrecked here. Um, so that was key. He tries to do a suicide run where he runs up the gun truck. I uh, murder him as he does so. Then I make the suicide uh, steward rush towards the central objectives. He has two units of infantry up there. You can see where my steward ends up here, right? He had one unit of infantry behind this building. He had one unit over here. And I move up, and I turn, and I split fire, and I kill both the units. Um, maybe I only wounded one of them, and then charged it. I can't remember, but um, we both knew that killing both units would cost me the steward because his his Hellcat was right there. It it would have a clear line of sight to my steward. But as I said to him, well, your infantry is more important than my steward, so I'll happily kill your infantry, lose the steward to the Hellcat, which he promptly did. He killed my steward with a Hellcat, and he was so happy about it that I actually at the end not. That I was feeling bad, but he was like, "Come on, you don't <laughs> pull that other steward up. Pull it up. Come on, you don't, you don't dare." And uh, at that point, my Gurkhas had already cleared the central objectives, so I was winning. I knew I was winning. I pulled up my steward. Um, yes, it was a, a mistake to do so, but it was just so fun, and I was so happy seeing him actually killed two stewards in a game. He was so happy that he'd held, his Hellcat had done so. And uh, I, I just, I didn't feel bad about losing the steward at all, I must say. Not that I deliberately lost the steward, but I deliberately gave him a chance, a fighting chance, because I had won. There was no doubt about it, right? Here you can see his Hellcat had moved up here into the blocking position and then moves up to kill my steward, which here the turret has been blown off. I had a lieutenant sitting on this objective, 
I had some Gurkhas which had moved up towards this objective and lost the close combat to his lieutenant. Um, they were pretty banged up by that point, but they still lost the close combat. I also had a motorcycle run up and try to contest it. That died. So, yeah. That was the game. And uh, I think Bert's mistake was splitting up his forces too much. He had two fire bases, one with the gun truck and the Hellcat, and one with the um, recoilless rifle and his heavy howitzer. I think that was a mistake. He was split up too much. And his infantry in the center actually ended up not being supported because I pinned out his howitzer and I blocked his his um, supporting uh, vehicles. So they pushed unsupported towards my Gurkhas, which you, you can't do. That that never goes well. So I think there was something in in the deployment for Bert that could have gone could have been better placed. I think I think his vehicles would have been more useful had they been in the center somehow. The result was a massive win for me. Um, Four one on objectives and eleven to seven on kills. Bert actually got to kill both of my stewards, which he was happy about. I was happy that he'd done it. And I will ad readily admit that the Hellcat was better in this game than I thought it would be. Um, there, I've said it. I promise I would. Right, that was it. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video where I tell you about my game too. Cheers.